we have the most successful comedian in all the Jewish world and in all the Jewish homeland, Matan Peretz. He also runs the Hi, biggest podcast you? that I think is the biggest podcast because I, I, I listen to it. I'm a big fan. Olim in Tel Aviv. He's crushing on the circuit. He's going around everywhere. Uh, Matan, it's an honor to have you. It's great what you're doing. I mean, Thank it's you. it's really amazing what how you've pivoted and what you've been what you've taken your platform and what you do for comedy and bring it to light. And and that's really what I love. And that's something so resilient about the Jewish people is that even in challenges, we always turn it and we spin it and we make it our own. And we can't we're not we're, we don't sit in sadness and sadness doesn't do anything. So Matan, you're the definition of really what the Jewish people are. So we really appreciate you coming on. Oh, oh, thank you so much. That's uh, that's very <laughs> wow. Okay, thank you, thank you for that. I appreciate it very much. Of course. So, Matan, can you give us a little bit of your background? I know you came from the the West Bank, and and can you give us your background and where you are and what happened October seventh. I know you were in the army. I was. I'm also. Uh, I'm I'm an ex IDF lone soldier, so I know it pretty well. Super awesome. So basically. Um, I was born and raised in the West Bank until I was I was I was finished with my elementary school. Then we moved to Bechemish. Then we moved to uh, Ganyavne, where my parents live to this day. I I now live in Hulon because if you're a stand-up comedian in Israel, you need to be somewhere around Tel Aviv. So uh, that's I, I I will never live there. I don't. Me and Tel Aviv, we have a very toxic relationship. So I live in Hulon. It's close enough, you know. Um, and October seventh, I was in Mexico. Uh, I had I had like a, I took a vacation before uh, what you called as a stand-up comedian before the winter tour, uh, which is October, uh, November until New Year's basically. And so we went, me and uh, three of my comedian friends, we went to uh, Mexico for three weeks. Our flight was scheduled back at October 7th. Um, and then we heard, like we sat in the, in the hotel, it was 11.30 Cancun, 6.30 in the morning Israel. And we were like, we heard about all this like rockets and potential terrorists. And we didn't understand anything that was going on. Uh, we got um, uh, messages from our uh, uh, Delta, the uh, flight company, um, that our flights are canceled, obviously, and we didn't understand what's going on. Um, I knew immediately, like I got a call from my uh, my commander telling me, like, report to this and that. And I was like, dude, <laughs> I'm in Cancun right now. That will be problematic. And and, and he, he was sh so shocked. He was like, yeah, me too. I was like, no, really. I'm in Cancun right now. So he's like, okay, whenever you can. So he took me a week and a lot of help and a lot of like contacts going around. Uh, but uh, October 14th, I was back in Israel. October 15th, already back uh, in the West Bank, in Hebron, Judea Samaria. Oh, so that's that's where you were serving. Do you, did you find that when you got immediately when you got there what was the sentiment what were people thinking because you came a little you obviously came a little bit later war already started they're already talking about i mean next steps and, and what's going to happen what what was the feeling of most people got back october 8th because they were in the country what was the feeling as a reservist that came back what was what was the mood at that moment uh the mood was if i'm being completely honest is that this is i know it sounds weird now but the mood on October 14th was, this is the last war we'll ever have to face. Like, this is it. This is it. We're done. Um, we're going to we're gonna take back what what's ours. We, we're in, like, no negotiations. Uh, like, it's it's over. This is, that, that's going to be the last war. That's what people were saying. Later on, obviously, we all understood that it's going to be, like, every war that we ever did that the world don't let us win ever um so you know but that was that was the atmosphere around october 14th i guess until like december yeah i mean it's it's amazing that's actually what we thought too you're like this is the last fight of our lives i was talking to somebody yesterday and they said during the yom kippur war the, his mom he saw his mom and during the yom kippur war the mom had ten thousand dollars to her name 
and she gave 9,000 of it to Israel because she went, this is the last war and you have to empty your bank accounts. And that's what people have been doing. What we've been preaching lately is the war is not over. The need is not over. I mean, there's a huge problem right now in the, in a lot that there's a big problem with suicide with a lot of this, uh, with a lot of the, the refugees that they don't, that they, their, their homes are destroyed and all their, their friends are killed. And it's really, it's really a terrible time for them. But I, I feel like it's kind of progressed to a different sentiment now that we will finish this war, whether people like it or not, which I find a little different than what it was beforehand. Yeah, because we we kind of knew that it's going to go that way. We hoped it wouldn't, but we knew based on the past mistakes that it's going to drag and drag and drag and promises, promises and whatever. Uh, negotiating this, negotiating that. We all knew that's going to happen. We really hoped that it wouldn't, but I had, I had one non-Jewish friend yeah. that I spoke to right after like October 8th, October 9th. He says how horrible it is. Look how everybody's supporting Israel. And this is going to be like a, I says, okay, let's see what happens in two weeks. And maybe it was a little longer than two weeks, but now we could see like this thing with Schumer is like ridiculous. I think he's just lost all credibility for himself and just Biden. I just uh, I just don't. I just don't see how anybody can vote for him. Yeah, it's. I'm like. I'm really. I'm not really big on politics, to be honest. Not the Israeli one. Not the international one. But like for me, it's it's it very it's very weird to try to explain to people that this is a survival thing, you know, because they see us and they we live in houses and you know we go to the beach or whatever. So people just, I guess. They don't understand the severity of the situation, but it's weird. I, I'm I'm exhausted of trying to explain to people why I deserve to exist. You know, I'm really I'm really yeah, exhausted by it. And that's a very that's a very Jews in the diaspora kind of thing. Israelis, we get tired real fast. Like, oh, you don't get why I, I deserve to be here. Okay, bye. Nice talking to you. <laughs> no, we're used to it. We've been we've been having this conversation. I mean, we've been dealing with it especially where I live, I live in New York city, every single day, there's a protest outside of my office. Like every, like really, they don't, yeah. they don't got a lot going on. Like I never really held a sign as a Sebastian Monica. Like I never really picketed for like 12 hours every day. Like yeah. I just didn't have that much time in my day. Like, I don't yeah. know what these people are like, what else you got going on? So uh, yeah. let me ask you this about, about the comedy in Israel, which is really your forte. Has the mood? Israel is known, and I, what I love comedy. I'm a big comedy fan. Israel is known for dark humor. Yeah, they're not pivoting into dark. Oh yeah, I find Israel is like what they're they're known for light humor. Uh, listen, listen. I'll give you an example. Um, I think if you constantly, constantly uh, on like a war over your life and your personal survival if you don't make jokes you'll kill yourself of course that's so i'm saying okay. israel so israel yeah. is known for israel has great humor but it's exactly. it's it's dark humor I so would, what's the what yeah, yeah it's dark humor and uh, and people are way more open for it now and really like i'm i'm known for like i have a like a lot of bits of dark humor in my show and people love it people wait for it i was in uh at bill burr's show when he was here i think it was two years ago and we went me and a bunch of comedians we love to see you know whenever a big comedian comes to israel we all buy tickets like you know that and uh we went to his show and he like halfway through his show he was really like constantly saying that he's so surprised how people are laughing and open about the subjects that he says because he was like in the states that would never work in the states people will kill me and he said all those stuff and, and for us it was like that's kind of light you know that's not even <laughs> that's not even problematic like you know so he was so surprised he, he had a bit about about like whenever you see a soldier in the u.s you're like thank you for your service thank you for your service he was like i'm not gonna thank you for your service i want to see like I want to know if you're in battle. If you're in battle, thank you for your service, you know? So in Israel, as you know, Yair, that we have Jobnikim and, you know, of course. We, we have people no, that I mean, did combat. So, so it was 
so like it was so precise to the Israeli audience that even Bill himself was so surprised. It was like people started laughing and clapping. It was like really like he was really surprised. So that's you know let's just tell you what it is here. All right. So so what is going to be what is the 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 joke? There's the Elon Gold jokes. There's there's the Modi jokes. There's all the different Jewish comedian jokes. What is the Israel joke that's going to be about how we wipe out Hamas or or post this or during it? What is what is going to be the crux of it? You got to tell us. Listen, I know it's going to come out on tour, but I want to get a sneak, sneak I peek. Got, I got a joke all ready to go, already, already filmed it. It was awesome. I don't know if to release it or not. Like, I don't want, like, I'm at that point, I'm, I'm watching it like three times a day and I'm still not sure if, how people will accept. I'll tell you the joke right now and maybe you can tell we'll me. We'll accept it. Okay? We'll accept it. We'll accept it. Be Fine. honest. Okay? That is not, you could ask my wife. She can attest for my honesty. Okay, so the joke <laughs> is that I don't understand uh, I don't understand uh, the movement, like queers for Palestine and all this. Like, I don't understand. Like, you're the first people sh that should understand where we're coming from. Like, I don't, I don't get why trans people hate the state of Israel. Like, it used to be Palestine. Now it's Israel. You should know that better than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I, a, I think it's solid. I, would, I think it's solid. Yeah, That's I very good. I like release solid. that. <laughs> I like I, I like that a lot. I, I like that a lot. You know what I mean? That's I like, like I like it a lot. And and these really Palestinian couples. That's everything. That's upsetting everyone. That's fine. They're already upset. What's the difference? It's just going to be continued. You know what? You're not really making it worse. No, no, you can't no, make I'm it gonna better. Tell that, I'm going to tell that joke That's myself part. now. <laughs> I got a, I got a joke. I got a joke for you, but tell me if it's good or if it's not good. Okay. I, I got Let's a joke. Go. I'm not a comedian. This is the best I got. I go, you know, I'm, I'm Jewish and I'm constantly looking for deals. I'm always like, that's, that's really what gets me going. So I, I'm, I'm walking outside my office. I'm wearing a yarmulke and everybody keeps coming up to me and offering me the, uh, Palestine for free. And I'm like, no, I don't want it. I'd rather pay for Palestine. They're like, if it was so cheap, they're giving it for free. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Exactly. No, the free Palestine thing, it's, you know, I, I, my humor is more. You didn't is, like it. You didn't like it. It wasn't. No, listen. I thought it was solid. Too no, typical. I heard just like the free it's Palestine. Too obvious a joke. All it's too the obvious a joke. I, it's too obvious. Have all right. Seen, well, I was happy. Have you seen what I uploaded like on Tuesday? I think it was. No, no, I didn't see it. Tell us. Uh, so I said, I said that when I performed in New York, uh, um, I tried to do some dark humor and it didn't go well <laughs> because I was like, I was like, I don't understand. I'm on stage in New York City, right? I was like, I don't understand why um, the United States, uh, you know, really so so mad at us for shooting uh, at schools. Like, at least we do it from the outside. <laughs> you know what? That's I gonna be that's gonna be too sensitive here. That's a very sensitive issue over here. That's already online. That's <laughs> already <laughs> sensitive too. I like it. I'm more afraid than them. Queers for Palestine movement. Than, no, you know, I think the Queers for Palestine shooting, movement but... is a great joke, but this the school is like a very it's a very sensitive topic. The shooting, well, you know, it's but that's 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 comedy. I mean, look at look at did. look at Dave Chappelle. He says whatever he wants, and he, yeah, he gets exactly. away with it. Like I, I don't I, mean, I mean, you're not, you're not. We won't cancel you. Do not worry. It might cancel us, but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, you can't be financial advisors anymore. Why? Well, I did I one know. joke that really upset. I, I, a few years ago, I did a joke in Hebrew. I did a joke uh, that there were there were one uh, Muslim Arab in the crowd, and he got really upset. We 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 had fun at the end and everything, but the joke was that I said that every once in a while uh, the Palestinians declare the day of wrath, right? And I was like, as opposed to any other day that you're all like huggy and kissy. And you know, try to make people feel better. Every day is day of wrath with you people. Like I quit, I quit smoking two months ago, and I feel like a Muslim. You know, so he didn't like that at all. You gotta start. <laughs> but, no, he didn't like. Tell me, you know, yeah, do you? Yeah, I mean, that's part, when you perform that's part in of Israel it. versus New York, do you make like different jokes? Is it a different besides the shooting of the school and all that? But do you have like a different yeah. set? Do you have like yeah, a different yeah, yeah, mindset yeah. when you that you that you decide on? 
And what's the difference? 100%. So what's the difference? The difference is the difference is that American crowd, I think international crowd, is more first of all more sensitive, obviously, than the Israelis, obviously, uh, and also on like on uh, on the positive side, they're very they will listen to you. They will listen to you. They will let you tell the story. They will wait for the punchline at the end. Yeah. They are very like they won't interrupt you like We're nine polite. times out of ten. Yeah, they will try to see where this is going. They will be fair with you, Israelis. If you're not funny in the first ten seconds, you're not you're on stage because with Jews, people gonna with Jews, they always we think we're everything. We think I'm the best Canadian. I'm the best rabbi. You know, I'm the best of everything. So you got to really prove that you're better. Yeah, Israelis just don't have patience. Like you have to, right from the start, before you say your name, you just, da, 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 and then, so uh, my name is Matan, you know what I mean? Like before, before for a minute, yeah, yeah, no, you have to. like, hey, how is everybody doing? I'm 35 years old, blah, blah, blah. Israelis, they don't like, it, make us laugh. And then we want to know shit about you. Like until you don't make us laugh. I don't want to waste you know, you my time you. knowing you. You have to. It's the same thing. You have to prove your, You have to prove yourself. It's the traffic lights in Israel. Absolutely. It's where the speed of sound is faster than the speed of light because they start honking at you before the light even changes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's why Israelis, I think, the state of mind, people don't, I think people don't understand the, like, the core difference between Israelis and like Jews all over the world. I think the only people who understand that, like, like a hundred percent of people who made Aliyah or like lone soldiers or people who really, yeah. you know, really experienced the Israeli experience of the army and, and, you know, looking for apartment or whatever, or like driving in the roads. So people don't understand that people talk to us, talk to Israelis, like they would talk to like, you know, Jews abroad. <laughs> yeah. And they're yeah, yeah, they don't realize surprised, it. they're always surprised of how little, we give a shit about their feelings. They're always so surprised. <laughs> they used to like long debates. Somebody wrote to me, somebody from from the UK wrote to me, you should go back to Europe, right? So like my dad's from Morocco. I've never like, I don't have anywhere to go in Europe, whatever. But the guy was, the guy was a black guy, right? He wrote like he's, he's from the UK. He's a black guy, an African dude. And he wrote, go back to Europe. And I was like, listen, I'm Moroccan. So if any, if anything, I will go back to Africa. You can go back with me. You know, we all should go back to whatever we came from. And he lost it. And he started like commenting, like you Zionist killer, whatever. And I was like, let's share a cab. Like I didn't give a shit about anything. I was just like continuing, like, let's go to Africa together. You know? So he just, he didn't understand what is happening. So for me, it was like, yeah, we don't argue the same way as other people yeah yeah no you can hand you can handle the abuse no problem it doesn't it's a, just a different oh you you hate me yeah get in line there's there's a whole line that can that will follow right Listen, right behind you i gotta show you something i gotta show you something there's a group of indonesian hackers right um, okay if you don't know indonesia it's the most terrible country in the world um i've never been i've been southeast asia for a few months but consumed consumed by islam like radical islam consumed like 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. so every once in a while they uh uh they gang up on me and make like you know photoshop photos of me as a muslim and every single time it's it's just like it's a, like masterpiece it's hilarious so every single time i share it and I tell my my uh, my audience like rate them from one to ten, you know. And the Indonesians don't understand what's going on because in their mind they're like, we want to offend you, like you they're know giving what I mean? you they're giving you so, content. They're, you're, you're getting, you're getting free, free ammo, like, dude. That's awesome. Like you want better pictures of me? I will give you. Just keep doing that shit. Just ask. Just ask me. That's all you need to do. <laughs> exactly. So so I want to show you. I want to show you uh, my favorite. One second. That was like one of the best, I think. He really put the word. Take a picture of this one. Oh, okay. First of all, first of all, we got this one, which I love. <laughs> Matan, turn the turn the screen. Let me see it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Now we got you guys rated. We got perm costume. That's a great perm costume. Exactly. We got this one. 
It's like I look more like Jesus than anything. <laughs> hey, hold on. Hey, hey, hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold shower on, hold in your on. bathrobe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, two more to go. Two more to go. I'll give you my second favorite, this one. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a nice guy. You just look like you're going to school. You Listen, look like you're in camp. You look, look like, like you're the, in sleepaway camp. I look camp. like the hottest yeah, imam like ever. You look and... like a model for the turban. <laughs> and my favorite one, my favorite one, because I do a lot of podcasts. That's my. That's my favorite one. Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> This is amazing. I really like I do. I can save them like in my favorites. This is amazing. They should be your background. They really should be the background. <laughs> like, listen, this is just – and every time they get so confused, they're like, why – they, they come to you like, why are you sharing this? <laughs> you know, like, Chris, like, weird. You know, they have no grammar. Like, nobody – I guess if you're too, like, religious, you don't know English. I guess that's the thing. So somebody wrote – somebody wrote – uh, you you are the killer, baby. He meant like you're a baby killer. <laughs> so he wrote, you're the killer, baby. And I was like, thank you, baby. You too. And he got all like, what is going on? <laughs> I was like, we get a lot of – To this point, we get on a little fun with it. You're going to go insane. No, it's no question. I mean, it, I like I like the – Michael Rappaport's like my guy. He like lives around the corner yeah. for me. <laughs> I see, everybody sees him all the time. He's always cursing and yelling at people. It's hilarious. And he's the same way. They keep sending him stuff, and he just goes like, share, share, exactly. share all the time. Why not? We had Why a not? about it. We had me and Michael became like really good friends for my complete and utter surprise. Yeah, I did not think in like a like hundred years that would ever happen. But we became really good friends, so we had a conversation about the haters. Yeah. And we ranked our haters. <laughs> like he's got some really good ones. I got to give it to him. He's got, he's got, really, more, he's got, he's got more exposure. exposure. Exactly. He got really like the talented ones. I got the like, yeah. you know, you know, oh, no. you he's got, know, he's got all of Hollywood he, and they're the worst with their stupid green things on yeah, the Oscars no, and all that yeah. nonsense. Who was the girl? Who was the girl? Uh, that did the song, the Free Palestine song that he just trolled. Susan I mean, Sarandon. it was just amazing. Oh, Susan Sarandon. That was <laughs> incredible. That was. Oh, this dude. And then that's this dude. guy. This guy doesn't care for a second. I, love I mean, it. he just. I love it. That's why that's I why love we're it. We're such good friends. He told me he was like, "Listen, like ever since we first spoke in this hotel, it was like two or three months ago." He told me, like, I want good things for you. And I was like, thank you. That's really, like, I really appreciate it. He's like, because you're like me, but younger. <laughs> and, and, he just and, has a lot more money. More he has a lot of money. Him, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's a little dark. You're a little darker. You're, you're, you're a little cap. As he's a little style. He's got a lot of money. Exactly like my comedy. I'm just a little bit darker. That's all. You should tell that's your it. Indonesian that's, hackers that works. To, no, give, he's got... to give Michael Rappaport some of these some of these content also. But I'd like to see my, Michael yeah. Rappaport in his feds and, and the robe. <laughs> my, my, favorite, <laughs> my favorite story. I I did uh, I did my reserve service right now with in, uh, in, uh, in Hebron. I did with, uh, with a rabbi. Rabbi Hanoch, Hanoch Kahana, he's the nephew mm -hmm. of the legend. Yeah, yeah, Rabbi Kahana, Kahana, of course. Yeah. So he's just the most amazing guy I've ever known in my life. He got like 30 grandchildren and he's like with me in the Czech post, right? So he yeah. doesn't know anything about like the media or whatever. I showed him a couple of videos of me and he told me like, you're doing God's work. Like uh, oh. doing all this hasbara in English, that's very important. He's like, he, he's like a full blown rabbi. It is amazing. And when the Indonesian attack started on my account, which got me shadow banned until like three days ago, by the way, I, I told him like, I told him, Rabbi, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know. Like, I know you know nothing about media or reports or blocked or whatever. But just so you know, like, I have to vent a little bit. I was like, the Indonesians are driving me crazy they're trying to hack my account like 60 times every hour i don't know what to do and and, and rabbi Hanoch told me he was like listen you're doing god's work god will take care of it and i was like do you have somebody before god that i can talk to like, you know like a ceo or something like if you guys have, I, I, I bet god is really busy right now they to take care of my instagram account right and he was like you're doing god's work god will take care of it two days later two days later 
a volcano erupted in Indonesia. <laughs> And all the reports. It's the same thing. It's the heart attack. It's the heart attack guy. Everything, that was like in, yeah. Uh, everything in stopped. Turkey. The same thing. It was just, and I told uh, everything I like, stopped. Hey. Uh, he, he asked me, he was like, "How's your country going?" I was like, uh, "There was a, a volcano erupted in Indonesia." <laughs> you see, <laughs> I told you about the story. <laughs> You're welcome. I didn't You're welcome. Need for it to be that much. I didn't need that much to be bad. Yeah, I was I like a little bit lower. I was like, he just like something. take out the power. You know yeah. what I mean? Just yeah, yeah like I got the power. For, like, be very localized. Yeah, yeah. It's it, but, exactly. yeah, like, that's that's the beauty. That's the beauty of the Jewish religion. Exactly, that works. That's the beauty of the Jewish religion. <laughs> So, all right, I got another joke that my first didn't land, but I'm working on it. I'm working on my – I'm going to do a stand-up. We do – I do a lot of speaking. I've spoken in front of thousands of people like a, a thousand times, I feel like, but I do more like financial and whatever, all this nonsense. But – and like Fox and Newsmax and all these places. But th this is my joke. I might get canceled for it. So, you know when there was like the, the Iranian fighting and like the, the – like I support Iranian women? Yeah. Like I related a lot to that because my wife is Persian and she doesn't work, so I really felt like I support Iranian women. <laughs> like I really felt that. I felt connected. That's a that's a good one. That's a really good one. All right, good. That's a really all right. Good I got one. at least one. Yeah, yeah. I got at least one. I got at least one, and I'm happy that you. Yeah. I think I gotta. I think I gotta do my first stand up. I'll I'll do it soon. I gotta. I just gotta get my set ready. I think I'm gonna do my first one in Israel. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the harshest place in the world listen, and do it right listen, there. Listen, it's going to be when I performed in the states. I was, I felt like, I felt, you know, you know, when they when they talk about Sparta, they say like when Spartans went to war, it was easier for them than training. Yeah, that's how I yeah, yeah, doing stand up comedy in the United States because I'm used to this crowd. I'm used to the Israeli crowd. Like they, they oh, go good. up All to right. your face and be like, "You're not funny. Stop <laughs> make like stop doing comedy. You're not like go to your day job, like in your face, right?" And then you oh, perform right. so that's like good. an American crowd. I think unbelievable. And you know the advantage, you know, yeah, in, in in the United States, you you never know what they're actually thinking. So if you only know that. Wait, I thought you stopped smoking two months ago. What happened to stopping to smoke two months ago? What happened to that? Yeah, it's uh, once uh, you know. I, I always. It's a very toxic relationship. <laughs> toxic, right? <laughs> no, but in, in the United States, you know what will happen right, me... before your ear tells the joke. In the United States, they'll just tell you about. They won't tell you honestly, but you'll just find out like three months later that they thought you stunk or whatever it was. But yeah. at least in Israel, they're yeah. honest to you. They're going to tell you right in your face. So, you know, okay, you know, you think I stink. Okay, fine. You know, like, I think, you know, like, yeah. let's just tell all the Palestinians, you know, just stop killing us. That's all we want. Just just stop it. Just, we don't want to be sure of that. Is that so much, right? it's too much, so much to ask? Yeah, that's the thing. Because when you talk about politically correct and when you talk about woke movement, what those things basically mean to me is say everything but the truth go this way and this way and that way and try to say everything you can but the truth right because truth can offend someone israelis we will say nothing but the truth if the truth offends you you're the problem not the truth that and that's the, the whole the problem right with this generation Honestly. which is this gen z TikTok like american generation that if you say, listen, like, you're not funny, or I don't know, you're a biological man, whatever, <laughs> people will get biological offended. <laughs> That's, I'm not trying to offend you. I'm telling you the truth. If the truth offends you, you are the problem. That's that's the whole thing. And and I thank God every day that this woke nonsense didn't make his way to Israel because a lot of things make this way back to Israel. But three things, you know what those are? Starbucks. Starbucks. Was that Amazon. one of the three? What was the second? Amazon, yeah. Amazon? Amazon. And school shootings. <laughs> I thought you had Amazon over there. I thought you had Amazon. And I thought you brought back school shootings. I thought <laughs> school shootings came in. I thought you had Amazon a little well, bit. That's the joke. Uh, delivery or whatever. Yeah, not really. It's tough. I know. They have to, you have to buy it. My mother-in-law, I have a son who lives in Tel Aviv, and my mother-in-law lives in Herzliya. So they're always trying to finagle. Oh, oh, let's put together a package seventy dollars so we can save on the shipping or whatever. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. 
That makes sense. It's a ridiculous. All right, Matan. So, so our, our podcast is revolved. I'm not sure if you, just so you know, we are the 31st largest podcast in all of the Philippines, which has, we don't know how we got there, but that's where we are right now. So you have Indonesia. You're pretty popular in Indonesia. We're very popular yeah, in the Philippines. I'm big which, in Indonesia. <laughs> number 31, number 31, the big three one, and I'm 32. Yeah. So I feel like I'm, I'm close to it, but there, there's a moment in your life that gives you this ability to constantly be resilient and to constantly push yourself. It, we call it like a defining moment. What was that moment in your life that that you took and you went, you know what? Like, I'm always going to push myself. I, I, you know, me and Eitan Chidiyad are, are very close friends and we talk all the time. I was asking him, I was like, how do we define these types of people, these resilient people that have are constantly pushing, that can't sit still for two seconds? And it's, it's really hard to define it, but they have this moment in their life that really – um, that, that's, that's something crucial that they pull back to whenever it's really tough. What was the moment in your life that, that was that? The thing is, I would love to give you like this whole like epiphany kind of moment. No, not epiphany. Um, but to be, but to be completely honest and brutally honest, which I always pride myself by doing is that's, that was just my whole life. It wasn't just like one moment that I said, oh, from now on, I'm never going to give up. No, that's very Hollywood. For me, that's ever since I was five-year-old and my my bus, my uh, we went to like a field trip on first grade. I was six years old and our bus was attacked by like rain of rocks. They injured the... The bus driver, they injured a bunch of uh, the school teachers, and I was six years old. Um, so my whole life was basically just you either roll down and give up or you're going to keep on going. And as Israelis as, and as Jews, Israelis just it's really in our DNA, but as Jews all over the world, you will never give up. You will never roll over. We're not those Jews with trembling knees anymore. And the world is really having a hard time accepting that Jews, you know, have power now and can say shit and maybe even offend you from time to time because the world are really is really using used to us being the people you need to save, the people you 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 know, you, you don't want to hurt them. It's like whatever if they go out of line, you can kill like a million of them and then there will be uh okay again but that's the thing that's the hybrid of jews and israel like jewish people alone outside of israel you know what happened i don't have to tell you the history the combination between jewish and israel the, the israeli jews people who lives in israel the 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 life here we we're surrounded by all arab countries all enemies right and that will make you tougher than you will ever believe like the things that look for people from from the outside that looks impossible for you it's very doable so it's not just the moment it's the whole like ever since i was a kid through okay. middle school through high school through my office, everything just like it was clear to me when i heard what's happened it was the first thing i instantly felt just like if you said like a let's let's call it like a like a numb uh, Russian agent, right? You know, like you have to say, you have to say a few words and he's like, Madarasha, you know, in all those spying movies. So for Israelis, all you have to say, Israel is under attack and everybody is just, I know exactly what I have to do. And that's because that's how we were raised. That's how we are. Like I was in, my commander told me, listen, stay in Cancun. But it's fine. Like you have the best possible excuse you're in mexico right now you're like 18 19 hours away stay in cancun i will talk to you later i couldn't like everything in my body just scream go back home that was for you know not that feeling was throughout the world i think you know not just for israel but everybody we all we all felt that we still feel that that's why there's been a tremendous amount of mobilization and supplies 
people coming, doing whatever they can. We, you know, we all felt that as a Jewish people, it was like a, like an electric shock went through our whole nation, everywhere you are around the world. Like we're all connected together. Yeah. We're all mobilized. You know, like your says to me, 100%. if he would have been down there, like when he, where he was stationed as a lone soldier, if he was down there, he would have been overrun. My own child would have been, and that's like, that's how we, everybody felt. Like be, besides, like my my own child could have been down there. We could have been captured, and everybody felt exactly. that. Exactly. I think that the, the only difference, the only difference, what I'm trying to say, obviously, every Jew around the world with a heart for Israel and for Judaism felt it. The thing is that what you felt as a Jew who lives abroad, what you felt is like like a calling. Like I have to support Israel. I have to maybe go visit. Israelis, we felt that if we're not coming back home, we're gonna explode. That's the difference. I couldn't like I I was I I was just possessed. I did everything I could. wasn't like wouldn't wasn't financially smart. wasn't like you know basically wasn't smart. It was just like stay at the hotel. The hotel knew what happened in Israel, and they were like, we'll give you a good deal. Everything for us to stay. And I, I couldn't. It took me a week. Yeah. And out of, out of this seven days, it was three days of me just 12 hours in the Miami airport. And out of 10 hours in the, you, you know what I mean? It was like, that was like two and a half days out of this week. And the moment oh, my, yes. I stepped foot in Ben Gurion airport, my dad came to pick me up. And that was the first time I could breathe. I was like, okay. And there's sirens going on and everything is crazy. But for me, I was like, oh, okay, thank God. Now I'm home. Let's do this. No, there's a there's a very interesting like parable that talks about and we could you can say it to your friend, your religious friend now, that that when Lot's wife when when they were leaving Sodom and Sodom got destroyed, remember like all the rock whatever destroyed destroyed Sodom, that Lot's wife what was the what was the calling that they said to everybody? You cannot look backwards. You cannot look back, or else something's going to happen to you. You're going to die. So what happens? She looks back, and she she turns into a pillar of salt. It's not a true pillar of salt, but what it is, she turned into a pile of tears. And if you if you're someone that looked at this moment and you went, I'm just going to obsess about it, you couldn't get up. So if you're in Mexico and you're thinking about it. You just get stuck, and you're and 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 the difference of the Jew and the difference of these people who are resilient, which is really the Jewish people, Israeli people, whatever you want to call them, is that they couldn't sit back for a second. They had to immediately push and immediately do more. We raised, we went. Okay, we can't physically be there. We, I mean, we went there. Uh, we did. We did as much as we could. We spent a week there. Great, but we raised one point three million dollars in like a month. I mean that we were like we we have access to the financial world we're going to we're going to take the financial world and everybody took this mobilization and made it something for themselves and and it's it was it's just a, it's amazing to hear what you're saying cuz that's really we felt it in in the everybody did the way that they could and it's amazing what you did I mean like that's a, that's an incredible thing if you would know me you would have called me would I I we paid for 50 flights of people we would have paid for your flight if you wanted to like without even a question it was it was just incredible but uh, and Matan, so tell us about a little bit about Olim in Tel Aviv and tell us about what you're doing now, because obviously you've changed. I, I mean, you're now in the podcast circuit, which is really cool. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. And, and I also want to give a plug and where can people find you and all that. Oh, um, so we're talking about the Olim Tel Aviv podcast? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was uh, me and my good friend Noah. Uh, Noah Barazani, uh, which is uh, also an Olach Hadashah, and her parents are like originally from Israel. She grew up in Texas. Uh, she's the manager of Olimin TLV, the very uh, successful uh, page on Instagram. And she wanted for a long time to do a podcast about, you know, about the whole experience and for the page. And she thought about it before the war and during the war, she understood that how important it is to for Olim Hadashim to have some kind of like relatable content, especially during this difficult time. And I took her to uh, Audiotel, um, the company that I've, I've been doing my podcast for two and a half years now. And we just started. And Noah, because she's half American and half Israeli, which is, I think, one of the best combinations, she got 
Michael Rappaport and Elon Levy. And like, she's all for it. She's doing an amazing job. And I'm just happy to be a part of it. I mean, I, I'm bringing the Israeli perspective, but uh, Noah is really, she's doing it and she's amazing. Yeah, so it's, it, I mean, that's what you guys, you're doing your husband on your own way and it's, it's working. I mean, obviously people are seeing it here. Yeah. People are seeing it around the world. It's awesome. But Matan, where can, uh, first we want to thank you so much for coming on. Um, if you have a last joke that you were testing with, we'd, we'd like to hear it. If you don't, if you have one more that you're ready for, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I think you can handle it. If you have one no, more, no, it could no, be I dicey. Told you the joke. I told you, I told you the joke that I was conflicted about and you, you ease my mind for a little bit. So I'll maybe post it on, you know, after Shabbat. We'll see. I'm you still thinking about it. I think you should do it. They did it myself and take credit for it. You better hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay the clock is running okay i'll, I'll post yeah, it yeah i would do i would do it you gotta take risks in life so i think yeah Ear was asking just so, uh Tom, where, if where we have can, one more know, joke where can people find you uh give us your plug okay so ever since the yeah. shadow band is over i'm very excited uh yeah um, you can find me on instagram on facebook on tiktok on youtube uh, Matan Peretz, just right, Matan Peretz, and hopefully I'll be your first uh, uh, pick. And yeah, I've been doing this all over English, Hebrew. Yeah, I have my website, matanperetz.co.il. Uh, so thank you guys. Do you have any uh, trips to the States coming up? I really hope so. But for now, I'm, I'm for two reasons. One is I have to do my, uh, my summer tour. And the second reason is we don't know what the situation will be. So I would rather stay here for now. So I won't have the troubles again, like Mexico. I'll stay here. We'll see how sure. it goes and then we'll decide. But obviously my ultimate goal is a tour around the United States. Obviously. Let us know. All right. So let us, let us know, let us know when you come, we'll set you up with the IAC. We'll set you up with, um, we, we have a lot of connections here. I mean, we, all the time, people are asking us for speakers. Uh, if you were in New York, we could get you in front of four or five hundred people tomorrow. It'd be, it's very easy for us to do that. So when you're ready, let us know. We'd love to. We'd love to kind of host you and just have you and do this again in person and just just come in our studio. But uh, we really appreciate you coming on, Matan. Thanks so much for everything you're doing. Great I mean, me. it's it's amazing that you're even you're you're even holding on your own life just to be uh just to like which is you can right now go around the world and you would sell out around the world but you're 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 actually holding on to your real values and that's more than anything so we we really appreciate that it's it's amazing um thanks everybody for Thank coming you. thanks for everybody for listening and we'll uh we'll see you on the next one and those indonesians you better watch out don't mess with matan thank you for having me Bye. Bye. thanks for more content it's free content <laughs>